Hello, I'm Daniel Soldano, Vice President of Precision PCB Services. And we are a provider of uh, VGA WeWork Services, um, employee training, process development, and machine sales. Um, we specialize in VGA and um, what do you call high tech packaging type products. Um, we also provide a full array of, v of uh, circuit board rework services. Um, so we do everything from uh, board level, repair, traces, surface mount pads, all the way to exchanging components, uh, BJ reballing, and stuff like that. Um, when it comes to machines, that's probably what these videos are on, is our machines that we use and sell for rework. And we are a distributor of uh, Shuttle Star BJ rework stations. Um, we only sell new uh, Shuttle Star BJ rework stations. We don't sell anything used. But we do sell um, some used and refurbished SRT electronics type of uh, BJ rework stations. And then if you need uh, training, uh, process consulting, calibration, repair, uh, we pretty much work on all models of BJ rework stations for providing service and support. Um, today, I want to show you a um, demo for you the Shuttle Star. Uh, this is the SD560A. This is our um, fully automated split vision uh, rework station with the um, robotic um, vision mm -hmm. system. And then we're going to be going over the features of this compared to the SRT1000, which is also a full automated um, split vision uh, with the robotic uh, vision system. And uh, we'll just show you a little bit uh, difference about how the mach two machines are different each other, um, how the higher technology um, differs nowadays from the lower technology machines. Uh, so, of course, we'd like to sell you our Shuttle Star. If you don't want to buy a Shuttle Star, we'll sell you an SR a used SRT. Um, uh, but if you're in the market for a new machine, um, we have machines that range from uh, 14,000 to 21,000 that will perform as well, if not better, than the machines that are going from 40 to over 100,000. So um, while I do those videos, try to show you a few of the things that you want to consider also when you're looking for a VGA workstation. And so without further ado, we'll get started here. Um, again, this is our Shuttle Star. And the Shuttle Star has a um, upper hot air heater. It has a lower hot air heater. And then it has an infrared perimeter heater uh, for larger boards. The, uh, compared to the uh, SRT that has an upper hot air heater, and then it has a, a massive hot air bottom heater um, that takes a lot of, has a lot of metal, takes a lot of time to heat up. Um, if you look at both stations, you can see the Shuttle Star weighs about 150 pounds. It's very mobile. Um, you can pretty much move it anywhere you want. It all uses a 220 volt outlet. It's totally self-contained. It has its own internal air, its own vacuum, um, and it's very compact because it uses more modern technologies. On the other hand, um, our SRT, it's weighing over 600 pounds. Um, you need to have a air, it runs on an air and electric, so you have to have a massive, at least a five horsepower or larger air compressor to keep up with the airflow on this. So if you're gonna install the um, SRT wherever you install it in your facility, you're gonna have to go through the trouble to run an airline, air regulators, have a pretty good size compressor and run all that electric on the compressor to blow the air. So um, the biggest thing nowadays when you're looking at a, a VGA rework station, you want to have some modern technology. You want to have, you know, something that's sort of, you know, up to date with your cell phone. So if you look at our machine here, it's totally self-contained. It has a, a touchstone keypad has a stylus just like your cell phone, so I can do all my commands from the touch, from the touch screen uh, keypad. It has a um, built-in camera where um, you can zoom in and zoom out at over 100 times zoom. Uh, the camera is about the same size camera that's in your cell phone. It's it's a small, high-resolution HDMI camera. Um, look at our SRT, and we have a camera attached to a microscope. Um, that's really old technology, and plus it's rather expensive. The microscope and the camera are probably up in the $3,500 range on that. So um, you're already looking at just, just the, micro, the, the vision system on this machine is expensive. And it requires a video card in the computer that also if it goes out, it's expensive. Um, 
if you look at any VGA workstation now, if they have a standalone PC, a, com a computer, a desktop computer running them, um, that's archaic. And you know the computers don't last long. You know, one of the computers last all is three, five years at the most. If these computers go out um, on the SRT systems, they're about ten to fifteen thousand dollars to replace. Um, so your maintenance down the road, if you, in any machine with a computer, is big maintenance. Um, if you look at our shuttle star system, they're running on a solid state relay pack. They call it it's a programmable logic controller. So the computer inside the shuttle star is about half the size of this relay bank. And then this is a solid state relay bank. And if you look at RSRT, this whole back panel is about uh, four foot by 18 by 12 or 18 deep. This side is all relays. So well, this much space for all the relays. And then the other side is all their air and pneumatic valves. So you, you're using about a, uh, what is that? I'd say four foot by uh, 18 inches by 12 inches deep of control space that my machine pretty much, this is the space it uses. So we have a lot of, a lot of our old technology in the SRT here that um, nowadays, like I say, it, sh it should be run by a PLC. So if you're looking at any, Newer machines are going to dump out, you know, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars. You want something that has a programmable PLC, a programmable logic controller that runs it with a touch tone keypad. You don't want to be going to the old, old desktop computer systems. Those, if they haven't updated that, uh, then I can say it's, it's just old technology. Um, other than that, uh, the SRT is is a great machine. It's a workhorse. Um, again, it'll last as long as your computer lasts. So um, we do the computer upgrades here. Um, if the hard drives, usually the hard drives go out, we'll, we'll change out the hard drives, reload all the software, recalibrate the machines. Um, so on the SRT, like I say, you may get some computer upgrades. Uh, we go through the machines here, check them all out. This machine here is in an excellent operating condition. Uh, so what we have on the SRT, though, is we have a, a large bottom heater, and it has... Uh, Holes drilled in the middle about every one inch, and so if you don't always put your board in the exact same spot every time, you're not guaranteed to get the same bot bottom heat profile. So it might be a little touchy there, especially with larger boards. Um, and also, it takes a long time to heat up this metal heater, and it takes a long time to cool down. With the uh, with the shuttle star, we're using the just a smaller direct heat hot air on the component area. And then we're using an infrared perimeter. The infrared perimeter has um, six infrared heaters, and you can turn them on and off um, in banks of two, so you can adjust the heat for the size of the board. So right now I'm doing a, if I'm doing a small cell phone board. I don't need to run my infrared heaters. I can just do with the top and bottom hot air. And then if I'm running a 12 inch, 14, 16, or 20 inch board, I can adjust my heater power out for those boards, so I'm not wasting energy. Um, with the SRT, the, the bottom hot air heater, um, no matter what size board you have, that's always running. You can't adjust it, you know, smaller or larger for small boards. So you're you're wasting a lot of heat energy. You're running that compressor a lot. Um, you'll see as we get into this how it works. So um, big thing, like I said, I, lo I love the infrareds. I love having the ability to adjust them um, for smaller and larger boards. And uh, that's pretty much it. We're looking infrareds versus a massive bottom header with lots of metal. Um, you're looking at our, our machines come with the uh, top and bottom cooling fan. They have a large cross cooling fan for cooling the board once the uh, process is done. And then the infrared heaters on the bottom, they also have cross cooling fans on the side. So all the heaters on this machine have cooling fans, plus they have a cooling fan for the circuit board. So once the profile's ended, the machine will cool down back to the starting temperature within two to three minutes. Um, our SRT, since it has the large bottom heater, it takes a lot longer to heat up. And then once the profile is over, it's going to take probably maybe anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes for the machine to cool down and come back to another pro, you know, starting temperature so you can start another board. So we're looking on our machine here, um, by maybe five minutes time between a maximum between switching boards and another board. Uh, this one here is going to be anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Uh, the larger machines that they have with the larger heaters may take up to 30 minutes to uh, cool down. And uh, a lot, I say right now they don't have any cross 
bad heat cooling for the circuit board or for the bottom heaters. Uh, but anyway, let me go ahead and get into this, and I'm going to show you how these work. So both these boards, I have a thermal uh, couple on the bottom of the component, just so I can see what my temperature is. So on the other side, I'll just put the board in here. Um, the SRT has these little rods in here to support the board. Uh, so if you're going to, uh, if you have a board with a lot of bottom components or tall bottom components, you're going to play around a lot, pulling the metal rods in and out, trying to get everything right so the board fits. On the uh, shuttle star, I simply have sliding, sliding uh, arms for the dust piece to be presented. Um, the bottom area is open, so there's no interference with the bottom parts, and we can just clamp it down and hold it in place. Again, for the uh, shell star, I just have a thermal couple on the bottom under the component here. I'm going to set that in, initially align it, and so with the shell star, we're going to have a touch tone keypad like my cell phone, I have a stylus. No, and I'm just going to do an alignment. Basically, this is going to allow me to center the component in the uh, vision system. So the robotic head automatically moves over. Let's see, can you see how you can see your component there? Uh, we have two colored lights. So all the uh, focusing is done on the keypad. Uh, you'll see my pickup tune and my uh, not heater nozzle are a uh, blue colored light. So when I move the component in, the component and the PC board are gold colored light. They both have adjustable light levels. So right now I'm going to do I'm just going to center my uh, component in the uh, digital system. Other feature of the uh, shuttle fans I like is the no nozzles are magnetic, so they just snap into place. You don't have to uh, mechanically try and get them to fit. And so we're pretty much centered. It has a micrometer adjust left and right, and it also has a feta for wall alignment. Oh, this one has an electrical feta uh, adjustment. And so right now I'm aligned, so I'm ready. And today we're just going to do a component removal, um, so we don't have to have this video too long. But right now I'm aligned, it's ready to remove the component. I'm going to go back and we'll reset this. And that'll set my visual system back to place. So now we'll go to the SRT. And the SRT, um, I have it set up. We're doing a uh, we're doing a profile on both these boards. We're using the same rate of speed um, for ease for comparison. We're using a two zone. Um, this particular SRT only has two zone profiling. Um, all of our shuttle stars have up to eight zone profiling, so you can pro set up profiles just like a reflow oven. If your operators are used to set the profiles for a reflow oven in your um, shop and uh, it's going to pretty much be the same thing as what you do on your repo. Um, on all these machines we provide a, you know, we have a, a support for training and installation. Um, so if you need employee training on any of them, we can do that. So right now I'm just uh, doing a uh, 230 uh, pre, 230 C, and then we're going to, to go up to a uh, 260 C reflow temperature and hold it for uh, 30 seconds on both machines. So we'll see which machine will remove the VGA faster. Right now it's going to run. Got to get my component started in the screen. So we're ready to go. Both components are set in the screen. It's on the uh, shuttle star. I'm just going to click uh, desolder. And on the SRT, I'm going to click remove. Now, so what happens is with my shuttle star, 
since I have a focus hot air on the top and bottom, and I have an infrared heater that provide infrared infrared perimeter heater that provides immediate heating, um, there's no waiting on on the shuttle star. This profile is already taken off, and it's already started its its heating phase for the top, bottom, and perimeter. On the SRT, since this bottom heater is so massive uh, amount of metal. It takes about five minutes for it to come up to temperature. So before we can start our refill process on the SRT, the bottom heater has to come up to temperature. So right now, we're waiting for the bottom heater to come up to our 230C preheat setting. Once the bottom heater heats up to 230C, then the top heater will come down and we'll start our, our preheating and refill process. So as you watch this, um, you know if you have any questions, you can type them in later. We, we do live broadcasts, so you're welcome when we have this live broadcast. If you sign up on our Google uh, Plus page, then you'll be notified when we have our live uh, trainings or live demonstrations. Um, and then with the live broadcast, if you want to get on and interact and talk live, just like a uh, webinar, you can. Uh, if you don't want to be live and don't like webinars, we can you can chat into text messages live or. You, Afterwards, you know, we upload the videos later on. You can watch them and uh, enter text messages. Um, we're always available to ask questions if you have any questions. Uh, you can call me. My number toll free is 888-406-2830. Or you can email me, Dennis, at pcb-repair.com. Like I say, we're, we're pretty much available all the time. Um, so if our customers need any tech support, um, we're there for them. Uh, we can do... Uh, Warranty and technical support live uh, via Skype. You can see we do live via the Google broadcast, although we haven't had any need for that. Um, the, the customers have been great. The machines have been great. Uh, we used to go, go in, set them up, do all the calibration, all the training, and then we just recommend a yearly follow-up. Uh, if you're not going to do the calibration, we can come in once a year and calibrate them. But other than that, machines are really reliable. I've had some of them in service for over five years now um, without a glitch. That's on the, the shuttle star machines. So the, again, the shell stars, we have a high-end, high-resolution high camera. It goes to about 120 times zoom. On the SRT, we have a high-resolution, you know, I guess, well, the VGA monitor, so it's not really high-resolution. This is VGA, um, this is HDMI. I think the newer model of these machines probably has the HDMI. Uh, but we have the microscope that gives us anywhere from 5 to 40 times zoom. Um, so if we're doing, um, there we go. Now it's just the bottom here, the bottom came up to uh, 230. Now the nozzle is going down and we're starting our profile here. Um, I was saying, um, so yeah, this one's going to heat up and then we'll move the component. And you're just looking at, you know, on our machines, you're looking anywhere from a seven to 10 minute overall refill process from start to finish. Um, again, on, on the uh, these SRTs, you're probably going to look at anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes from start to finish, at least. So, in comparison, the Shuttle Star will probably get your VGA refill to half the time, and it'll take up less than half the space in your shop. Um, like saying, if you're a lot, a lot of companies I go into, they're, they're, they're always re re rearranging things. So every time you want to move the SRT, you gotta have a forklift or something heavy. You gotta relocate the airlines. Um, with the shuttle style, I can say we just we, we put them on the back of our uh, SUV when we deliver them. They go on this hydraulic cart, and we can pretty much move them anywhere. They're, they're you know one person can move it off off not a workbench. It's not that heavy. So we are almost to zone three on the shuttle star, um, which is going to be our removal phase. 
I think in about 30 seconds it should be removing the component. Let me get out of your way here so you can see. Fifteen more seconds. There we go. So that we have the shuttle star has removed the component. Uh, the SRT, we're still waiting. Let's see what time we have. Eleven twenty. And uh, you can hear them, but the, the cooling fans have uh, kicked on. The uh, machine placed the component in the top in the top nest there, so it automatically placed the component. Now the cooling the cooling fans are running. Top, bottom, cross, and infrared heater cooling fans are all running. In the, about a minute or two, the machine will be cooled down, ready for the next board, and we can go again. Our SRT is still running. Um, it's up, profile's up to about 215. Uh, we wanted to get it up to about 260, I think. Yeah, we're at 224 now. Oh, yeah. They haven't even finished the preheat set phase yet. It's just getting to the preheat phase. Okay, so it's counting down on the preheat phase, about another 10 seconds, then it's going to start to go into the, the reflow phase. So again, both these machines are for sale, of course. Um, we'd like to sell them. Um, the uh, SV560 right now, complete with the rebounding kit, nozzles, and tooling set, and everything is about 20500 um, and again, we have the SV 550s that start at about 14,000. Um, this SRT, it's in very good shape. Uh, it has, I, even though it is, um, I believe, a 1990, uh, it's a 1996 model, but I, I acquired it from a company that wasn't really using it, so it has very little use. Um, so open up the computer, there's no dust, it's really clean inside. Uh, Everything's calibrated. The heaters are all producing very well. So um, this one here, we're just asking five thousand dollars for the SRT uh, plus shipping, of course. It's a little bit heavy, heavier machine. And again, with the SRTs, we don't have all the nozzles. I think we have about three or four nozzles with the SRTs. Uh, again, we're talking about cost-wise. Um, the nozzles on our machines are flat rate for a hundred dollars each. Okay, we're picking up now. So we're looking about a three minute longer uh, wait to remove the component with the SRT, but we're going to look at a longer wait now. The um, that all started just finished cooling off. Now once the SRT stops. So I just manually turned on the top and bottom here air to put on the machine. Um, I can program this machine to automatically come on. I haven't done that yet. Uh, so what you have to understand is when we are reworking a circuit board, um, we need our machine at the same starting temperature um, every time. So if I started at a 100 C every time, I'll get the same length of a profile. If I don't cool it down to a 100 C um, before I start, say if I start my machine at 100 
150C. When I have a program to start at 100C, it'll shorten that profile, and we're not going to heat up the board all the way and fall off the chip. So every time we start a new profile, we want the machine to be at the same starting temperature. Uh, today we started these machines at um, 25C, which was room temp, uh, and normally I'll I'll bring them down to about 55C um, starting temperature, uh, top and bottom heat heaters every time. Uh, so right now, I have to wait for that bottom heater on the SRT to cool down uh, before I can start another board. So we're looking at um, the uh, shuttle stars ready to go. We, both, we started at the same time, so the shuttle stars ready to start another board, and the SRT we're still waiting. Uh, let's see, right now they cool down. They're both at about 150. And what I do is I like to have a, on my shuttle side, I like to start at around 50 or under um, because the SRTs do take so long to heat, cool down. Um, you can get a cooling fan from the side here, but I used to reduce my starting temperature on the SRTs to uh, um, at least 80, a minimum of 80 C. I give a little, little bit extra space. Uh, but I know what I was saying while we're waiting for that to cool down. Um, Let's look at the accessories that are available for the different machines. Just to give you an idea, um, our machines, they have magnetic nozzles. Nozzles uh, retail for $100 a piece. We get them in rectangular sizes. I get them in very small, down to four millimeter sizes. Um, we get them large, up to 60 millimeter and larger. And then we get them rectangular. This is 110 by 20 for the uh, Samtech nozzles. So we have a large array of nozzles, and they're only 100 bucks a piece. Um, if you want to get your nozzles for the SRT brands, I think they're starting at they're like 250 or more for a nozzle. Again, our machines will go down to uh, they'll be chip scale one millimeter, and they'll also place down to 0105 components. Uh, they come standard with the pickup tubes to go down to uh, one millimeter, and then the pickup tubes for uh, 0105. Are around 500 bucks. Um, if I want to get a micro kit for the SRT, I'm going to go down to 0105 um, components, and then that you know in that range, one millimeter to uh, 0 0.0105, which is 0.22 millimeter. Um, those kits are run about five thousand dollars to six thousand dollars for for the SRT 1000. I just had one quoted. Um, so you're know, looking about ten times more to have the uh, fine. Find uh, the chip scale component uh, capabilities. Uh, so when you look at these machines, if you're planning to get the small stuff with the 0105 resistors or caps, or if you can do one millimeter chip scale, one millimeter, one millimeter chip scale, you have to make sure you have the resolution, uh, camera resolution, screen resolution, uh, the component placement capabilities and accuracy, and then also your airflow cannot be too high. You have to have a low airflow so you don't, so the machines don't blow the components off the board. Down, we're down to about 80C on the SRT, 1128. So uh, in this demo here, if we start to finish uh, from the time the shuttle star actually finished around 8 to 10 minutes faster um, than the SRT. So I'm going to get about 8 to 10 minutes faster uh, re uh, rework on each board. Uh, and that could even quake a lot of boards the other day. Although it's not crazy if you're not doing a lot of boards um, and you're not and speed's not your concern and money is your concern, a used SRT is a is a way to go. Um, although like I say my compressor is still running. Uh, my compressor is still running, and so there's a lot of energy or efficiency wasted. The, the newer machines are just a lot more efficient. Um, but that pretty much concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if, again, if you have any questions, if you need any service maintenance, or would like to come and see a live demo at our shop, uh, you're more than welcome to come. Uh, we encourage customers to bring their own boards and to um, Try them out themselves. You know, you're seeing is believing. Bring your boards here and see how well it works. Uh, and I'm sure you'd be impressed. So, again, thank you for watching. And I'm Dennis Laval.
Vice President of Precision PCB Services. Call me toll free at 888-406-2830. Have a great Monday.